Hey guys, I'm Dennis from Respect Studios and uh, I'm starting a new series of tutorials for the brand new Unity Shader Editor. I've been waiting for this for a very long time and uh, now it's uh, released in the Unity 2018.1 which is a beta still at the moment of recording this video. So I'll be starting a, a series now and uh, hopefully they will be adding uh, new features to the editor because at the moment there are some things which are missing but let's hope that soon everything will be just great and the editor will be working just fine now i have this uh, if I, yeah i have this uh, model of a house from a game that i did some time ago uh you have a link in the description where you can download the whole project also you have to go to this address and download the uh, lightweight and shader graph uh, zip which you have to open actually in unity it's a project you have to open it i'm going to uh, post that link in the description as well uh, in case to be able to use the shader graph you have to open the project and then import the house that we'll be using here so first of all to be able to create a shader editor you have to go to the project settings, go to create, and go to shader graph. You are actually creating a shader graph. So we're going to type that shader graph 01. And let me just place it under the shader graphs. Now, if I double click that, you can see that it's opening the Unity editor. Now, first of all, uh, we have to create a new material which is going to be called material01 and uh, we will apply that material to this house now to be able to select the shader that we'll be creating you have to select the material and go to shader and then go to graphs shader graph01 it will be the same name that you named the material i hope that there will be a way to move it to another uh, category here in the future because at the moment I don't think there is any way to do that but uh, as I said this is just a beta so hopefully soon we will have that option now you can just double click on the shader graph or uh, hit the open shader editor and you can see that you have uh, the PBR master shader you can make them smaller like this <coughs> this is the save button when you make some changes you have to save it so let's create something very 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 simple uh, first of all to create a shader you have to right mouse click and create a node you can see that there are a lot of nodes here uh, with the middle mouse you can move around with the scroll you can zoom in and out now let's create a node and uh, instead of searching it here let's just type color okay Let's select the output this is the output of the notes and this is the input of the notes if you select the output and just release it somewhere you can just type for example sample texture and it will connect it automatically i'm not sure why it connects it to the uv2 but anyway <coughs> uh, if we select that color and connect it to the albedo you can see now that that sphere is black if i save it the house is black now the thing is I don't have the color here, which is weird. I have a color here. I can change it. For example, I can save it. The house will be red. And this color is not serialized. So, to be able to make it uh, like a property, you have to come here to properties. Hit add the. Let's make a color. Let's name it base color. And now, instead of using actual color from here, we are going to create a node and type property we will say a base color and now we will add that here and now we can change that from here let's type let's make it like a green safe and now you can see that we can have a different color okay we have a property now just to make everything working as it should be let me take the output and connect it to the alpha as well but 
to make that work we have to change the shader from override to alpha blend let's save and let's see if that's going to work no it doesn't but why because i'm connected to output 4 let me try to remap oh not remap let's try to split that okay let's select everything here and just get the alpha here okay and now we can have that working okay the split node is simply splitting all of the values and uh, you can modify only one of the values for example if you want and then you can combine them after that but we will talk about all these nodes later on because they are not in the fundamental part so <coughs> now we have the house we can make it invisible perfect let's remove that let's remove the property as well now it goes the same if we use a texture let's go and use a sample texture just because we want to apply the textures of the house i have provided textures in the folder <coughs> house color house normal house specular okay and uh, let's select the sample texture let's come here to the small circle and type uh, house we have a house texture and let's apply it here to the albedo save now the house oh let me just change the shader type to overwrite save <coughs> and now you can see we have a texture which is perfect but the problem is again we have texture here but we can't change it so what we have to do is add a texture property let's name it diffuse and uh, we can leave the sample texture let's use a property name it a diffuse and now we we can't apply that here we have to use a sample texture node as a transition so now we can <coughs> sorry now we can select the texture from here Okay, hit save. And now, as you can see, we have a serialized property here. We can select the texture color, and now we can select different stuff as well. For example, we can select some other texture, which is not matching with our UVs, but this is how it works. So, this is cool. Let's do something else. Let's add a normal map. First of all, you, you have two simple way of ways of adding a normal map first way is uh, go to create node and type normal and select normal create <coughs> this uh, just a moment okay I uh, was away for a moment let me start again uh, if we want to use a diffuse to generate a normal map we can take that property with the texture and add it here now you can see you have a sample texture we can select that output and put it in the normal hit apply and uh, we have a normal map it's not perfect but it can do some job okay uh, what else we can do is we can hit add float and type uh, offset normal offset let's add another float and type uh, normal str for strength and now let's create a let's create a property uh, let's duplicate the property with ctrl d or command d on map let's select that normal offset here apply it to the offset let's select normal strength apply it to the strength hit save let's type here 0 0.5 and uh, here 5 apply save and now if we set the 0.5 this one and let's say 3 4 2 1 2 3 4 5 4 let's say 4 and let's see how this is going to be something like that 
like I said, it's not perfect, but it can do the job because you're not using a normal map, which is great. But we have, fortunately, we have a normal map. <coughs> and uh, let's create a node. Again, a property. Let's remove these two and add another texture, which we'll call normal. Create a normal map, create node. Sample texture 2D, connect the normal map here. Uh, search for house 01 normal and make sure that the type is set to normal. Okay, now apply this to the normal map, hit save, select the house, <coughs> get the normal, and you can see that the normal is doing just fine. Of course, it's always better to have actual normal map. Hmm. Okay. Now, let's uh, have a specular. Now, we can change that shader from metallic to specular, and we will have specularity. First of all, what we can do, of course, oh, let me just close it and open it again. What we can do is just the, add a color node. Actually, not a color node. We can add a color property. Type it spec. Create a property here. And uh, use the spec and then apply it to the specular. Okay, seems fair enough. We can type it white, we can make it white, we can make it red if you want. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, you can make it different colors and have different uh, colors of specularity. You can type it, you can make it white, which will be pretty reflective. But we have a specular color. So let's remove that property. Let's add another texture property, which will be our specular. Let's move this like here. Let's make a property and uh, make that specular. Let's make another texture to the sample and attach that to the specular. Okay. Let's search for house 01 specular, save, and if we come here and type house 01 specular, and now you can see we have a specular map applied. The problem is that this specular map is pretty dark. There aren't much of specularity here. So what we can do to make some control over our specularity is we can add a float and name it spec intensity and uh, add a property here, which will be a reference of the spec intensity, and then add a multiply node. Now the multiply node is just multiplying two values, two nodes. Uh, I hope that in the future they will add an option to multiply more than two nodes. So now if we want to multiply more than two nodes, we have to make more multiply nodes, which I don't think it's a good idea. Anyway, we're going to add in the first slot, the sample to the texture, and in the second slot, the property, specular intensity. And then we are going to output the multiply node to the specular. Hit save. And now you can see that it's barely visible, but here you can see that we can pump up the specularity to 10, for example. And it will be pretty specular. We can use the light so you can see. Okay, this is for controlling the specularity. This is perfect. Now you can see that we made a uh, texture. The thing is that. We can even use one of the channels from here, for example. Just for instance, I'm going to delete the specular. 
I will create a split node and uh, I will move this to back. I will get the R. Actually, I will get all of them. Oh, actually, I don't need a split node. I can just take the R and add it here and make this one 125. You can just something like something like that yeah so i will take the red gb the b value save it and now let me just where is the specular i don't need it i will remove it now i have a specularity which is not perfect but like i said if you want to save memory for the textures you can just make everything from the diffuse Anyway, it's so cool to have undo in the graph editor. Yeah, let's save it. Anyway, everything is working. Now, in the next video, we will see some more features, more notes, and so on from the graph editor. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the tutorials, there will be plenty more tutorials for the graph editor. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.